Um, Azori, uh, how did you, this is uh, not only just a, 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 a travel in, into Cuban cuisine, it's also a, a geographical uh, map. How did you map the film geographically? Uh, because you take us in so many different places, so besides showing us a different food and a different um, uh, food culture, you really show us different areas and different places in, in Cuba that are so uh, beautifully different from each other. Well, first of all, thank you again for being here. It's a pleasure. And, and I'm, we're very grateful and happy to be here with you. Um, the idea of going through the entire island is the Cuban island is a very big island. It's, it's the biggest island of the Caribbean, uh, Cuba. A lot of people think it's a small island, but it's, it's a big nation. It's a big nation that uh, has been, uh, has had communication problems, not only in internet, but also in transportation and, uh, and many different problems. So not even Cubans know the entire island completely. Uh, Cubans doesn't, doesn't have like economic means to go uh, and do tourism in their island and there, is, and there is places that are very remote. Even for us, they were very remote. So we end up always knowing what happens in Havana or in Santiago, but not in the rest of the island. So the idea was to break that a little bit and, and to go all through the island to places where nobody can go or where people usually don't go and see what's there. And we, we found a lot of like, we discover food that is not known in Cuba, not even for Cubans. And this, this was something that we started with the film and it's something that we're working more and more and more to try to encourage Cubans to discover what's the Cuban food that is more than the rice and beans that people is used to know about it. I so. mean, how familiar were you with these areas and how did you find them, how you sought them? Uh, because again, they, they are remote, they are very original stories, they are, they're not something that you just drive by and you see, oh, I'm gonna stop here and ask. So tell us a little bit more about how did you discover all these places and how how much did you know your country before making the film? Well, I knew a little bit about it. Like before starting the research, I knew a little bit because my mother is from Orguin, so we would go to her family's house and we would visit sometimes. And uh, as a young, like when I was studying arts, I used to travel a little bit. Uh, I did not knew like everything, absolutely everything of the island. So what we did, knowing more or less what was there, we sent a team of researchers that they spent three months traveling all around the island. And they would get to places and they would try to look for the most interesting stories in every place. Uh, sometimes we would have three or four stories and then we would sh get there and we would see which one of those we could shoot. Uh, sometimes we would shoot two of them. We actually ended up with, I think, 15 or 16 stories, but it was too much for the film. We, we had to cut it because if not, it was very long. Uh, but we shot much more than, than what, what is here. And so they did this entire research of three months and then we traveled to Havana and we, we meet up with them and we were going with them, following the same route that they did and, and trying to hit certain places at, at certain times that we wanted to, to do, you know, like a New Year's in, in Pinar del Rio because the cigar is usually a family business and the, 30, like the New Year's Eve is a family thing in Cuba. So we wanted to hit that we had certain things that we wanted to hit and we planned the trip around it. And were you always welcome? Absolutely. This is something that we that we really liked about 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 the culinary, like the, about food, and it's, it's like we are big supporters of, of culinary diplomacy, and actually we're doing a, a, a big a nonprofit to try to encourage to do culinary diplomacy. So tell us a little bit. Explain us the, culinary diplomacy. Because like you can have like usually in Cuba, what happens is if you come out of Cuba with a camera, a lot of people will will feel afraid about giving you an interview because they say, okay, we have all this bias that people is gonna come from out of Cuba and they were gonna try to create a story against the revolution and then try to sell that as a story against the revolution and they will be in problem. This is something that people is, is just worry about and, and they are very hesitant of talking with people. But when, once, you are, once you sit with somebody and you have food in the middle and you're both experiencing the same flavors and the same passion for the food, all of that goes away. Like, like it's very hard to sit and eat um, uh, pork belly with somebody and just be thinking in differences. You're just enjoying the same thing, talking about the same topic, and, and you can create a bridge, and you can, you can have a communication. It doesn't matter 
political views at that moment. That's a moment, like in a family, you know, you have a big family, and maybe there is a moment that everybody's fighting, but there comes the time of sitting at the table, and people have a meal, and they love each other, and then life goes on, you know? But those, those small moments we can use to create bridges. And that's something that, we, that we're doing. We actually created the Cuban Food Stories Culinary Initiative. That is something that we're starting, that the first step is to educate people inside the island of what other Cubans are doing to, to, to keep their heritage alive, to eat better food, what techniques are they using, because that's something that Cubans doesn't know. So we're starting with, with like giving an award for stories, for documentaries, for content, to educate Cubans of, on how to eat again. Like it's like we, they have to learn again on how to do things. So that's the, the, the first thing that we're doing right now. Uh, what, what I find really interesting about, about, about other things is that uh, you use food as a, as a tie to the past and to the to the tradition and the culture, but also like like, like as a, a in a way a bridge to the future. Can you talk a little bit about the, the coexistence of, of of these two things in, in in the film? Yeah, I think it's very important at this moment because what happens is and and, and we see it happen all over the world. It's not only in Cuba. Uh, when a new chef is trying to produce something or a new food producer, the the fame, they will look for inspiration. Let's say, okay, let's do what they're doing in Italy, or they, let's do what they're doing in France, and they will try to create that type of cuisine. And uh, it's not until they look into their own story and they they build upon their their culinary traditions that they manage to become something unique. So we are at a moment that that we can start shaping that. We can start teaching them, okay. Yes, you, you need to learn the techniques in, of the international cuisine, but you have to look into your own history and, and, and build upon that. And, and that's something I think that is very important. I think uh, for Cuba to move forward in, in the culinary world, we have to look into, into ourselves. You know? We have to learn from the, from the world, but we have to really understand who we are and feel proud about it. We had, we had moments that were terrible and we didn't have food, and still we don't have food in a lot of places, but until you feel proud about your heritage, you, you cannot really build on it. And, and as, as, as Maria said uh, beautifully before, uh, food in Cuba, in Cuban, recent Cuban history is a, is, a, is a complicated issue because there were years, there were decades of, of uh, extreme scarcity. So how easy is to um, think of, of this culinary, new culinary culture in a place where maybe the next day you don't have that food, that, you, that ingredient that you need to do that dish, or you know, maybe you don't have it for, you know, how, how the contingency affects this culture. Yeah, it's extremely hard. It's extremely hard, very, very hard. But like every day there is, for instance, there is more food producers. And every day there is more restaurant tours. And every day there is people that are just trying to study. And, uh, and it's hard, it's a challenge, but we cannot keep avoiding it. We have to dive into it, like with all its problems, and and when this is missing, okay, we create a new recipe based on on on, on what is missing. Um, a, a dear friend always says that uh, the absence of food is a story about food, and it's about how resourceful we are when we don't have when we have that absence that we can move forward. Like in Vietnam, when you go to Vietnam, uh, the culinary of Vietnam is is marked by extreme famine. Like they didn't have food during a long time, they were dying of starvation, and, and their cuisine is very creative because of that, because they said, okay, we're not gonna die anymore. We're gonna, we're gonna eat absolutely anything, and we're gonna get creative about it. So I think we are at that moment in Cuba that we cannot keep avoiding the topic, because it's, it's hard, and we just have, have to dive hard into it. Uh, you raise your hand if you, have, if you have a question. I'm gonna share it with you, but I, I, otherwise I, I keep going. Um, I um, I was wondering when I when I, um, I watched the film for the first time and then and this one, uh, before reaching the notion of making it using food to talk about your your country, uh, did you toy with other subjects? I mean, how tortuous was the path to to get to to, to this one? Well, not at all. Like uh, I I am a foodie. I I, I love food. Is I, I I live for food, and. I grew up without food, like uh, so. I grew up like during a long time of my life without food. I I, I ate plantain skin for dinner, and it was very tough. So uh, at some point in my life, food was just full, I, food, fuel. It was not important for me. So I left Cuba, and I was lucky enough that my first roommate, his family, 
our restaurant tours. And he would tell me, let's go try this food. And I'm like, oh, I don't care. And he, he took his, he, his mission was like, no, I'm going to educate you. You're going to love food. And, and I started loving food. I fall in love all again with food. And, and I love food. I love films. And, and Malena, my fiance and produce, executive producer, also loved food. And, and we were like, okay, let's do a film about food. But if, even if it was easier to go to another country and create a, uh, a project in a, in a, in a film, in, in a country that has like a, a strong culinary roots, it didn't felt right. We felt that we had uh, a depth with our country that to start there, even if it was very hard. So that part was always there. Uh, the thing that we decided was okay, like it has like our, our cuisine. We it's not like we like when you go to Japan or to France or to Italy, you know. So what we decided is okay, we have to concentrate in the stories. That is what what makes it important in Cuba. That the stories behind this food, and that was like how it started. Jane? Uh, this is, a, my question is off topic for food in a way, but you created such a rich um, cultural um, experience through that movie. Uh, but there were some comments about the um, politics and people talking over food and getting past the politics. So it made me wonder about um, your sense of how many people in Cuba still support the revolution and feel resistant about going forward with some of the changes that you're describing. And how is that working out in the country overall, you know, the evolution of political change and ideologic, uh, ideological change? Well, that's that's a very hard question to answer to any Cuban, you know, because there is there is no much information about that in the island or outside the island. So, like, and ultimately, like for instance, I, as you say, like the food, the, the film was not about food, and what we're concentrating is not about it. So, I would not be able to tell you like how many people support the country or how many people don't support the country. What what I can what I can tell you that, and, and I feel very passionate about this, like a lot of people that support the country and that doesn't support the country are trying to, to establish a communication between themselves, are trying to, to build a bridge and start, are trying to start talking. And, and that is what I think is, is very valuable, uh, that people, like in every country, in this country, you have people that supports a government and people that are against that government. Like, and, and, and it happens with every government, it changes. And, but what's, what I think is important is people to communicate among themselves, not to uh, alienate each other. Uh, and, and I think that, that this is something that is happening with the arts, with everything in Cuba. They're, they're, getting, they're doing exchanges and, and whatnot. So. First of all, thank you so much, Julia, for organizing this and everybody um, in Sac Harbor Cinema, and thank you for bringing your film here. Uh, to me, the bigger underlying theme of what we just all saw is this is a country not consumed with people running around with their little phones and no one was staring at a computer throughout the entire film. These are people who are living day to day focused on what they can control, uh, what they can create and enjoy. So, I mean, that was a profound underlying theme of this film, the, the, the first guy who was fishing and just taking such joy in pulling the fish out of the water and serving to everybody on the boat the freshest imaginable food. I mean, to me, that was really a stunning aspect of this film. It's like. I actually didn't touch my phone for two hours myself, but I mean, here are people who just don't live that kind of a life. They're living a more direct, natural, primal kind of a life, and there's a lot of value for all of us, especially in the Hamptons, to, to see in that. Great work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Over here. 
um, st structurally, uh, did I see a hand? You want it? Okay. Uh, uh, structurally, how did you, if you have this, you have your narration, and then as opposed to doing like, inter you know, sit down interviews where people talk, you, you have them telling their stories. So when did you arrive to this, how to, this kind of organization in the film and why? Um, people in Cuba is very shy, extremely shy, uh, and, and is very afraid of sitting in a camera. And we have had a long tradition of having uh, a president that was always in camera and I was always talking the same way. So when you put a camera in somebody's uh, side in Cuba, they, they, they become that person. And, and it's very hard to get them to give you like a, a passionate uh, response of what they want to say. So we were, the first weeks that we were shooting, we, we were having a lot of struggle with this. And we decided, okay, we're not going to do sit down interviews because it's not going to be natural for them. They're afraid that they have this camera and then they're trying to deliver something for this camera because a lot of these people had never seen a camera. So we decided that we were just going to roll sound with them without the camera. And then it was going to be way harder for us to build the film. And it's a challenge that we, that we, we went through the entire film. And it's a challenge that we, like for instance, we had female driven stories and, and it was very hard, like in the countryside to get females to, to, to tell us their story because not because they want it, not because the men like, but because it's a, very macho country, it's a very macho culture. And even we had a female DP, female producer, even so, like, the, it's, it's hard for them to communicate with cameras. They're not used to it, they're afraid. We only have two television channels, so people, it's not like people, like, like you were mentioning, they don't have phones, so families doesn't shoot each other. So it's, it was challenging, that's the way that we decided, okay, it's gonna be bad, it's gonna be, hard for us to edit a film without seeing the faces of the people talking to us, but this is what we have to do to, in order to make the film. But I think it works great. And also in, in, a, in a culture as, as an exhibitionist as we're living, it's, it's, it just completely offsets you at the beginning and then it kind of it carries through. Yeah. So I think it worked out to your, Thank you. personally I think it worked out to your advantage. That, Thank uh, you. And as Maria was saying before, yes. Hi. Sorry. Um, I w you did a beautiful job. It, it was a beautiful film, and, and the editing was paced well and colorful. Um, I was surprised by the prevalence of protein in all of those um, shots. I, I really was expecting a lot more, uh, uh, less of abundance. And um, you started by making that statement, in the cities there is an abundance. And so I was wondering if, um, this was done several years ago, is that correct? It was three years ago. Three years ago. If you're going to return, will you go more into the cities and look at um, the, the, the plates in the cities? And is there, a, uh, is there a prevalence of vegetable uh, dishes in those cities? And, and I've heard that there are community gardens in the cities and will those you know work their way into your future work this is something that is, is very interesting because when we did the, the premiere in berlin we had one of the, sh the chef that that is on uh, let me just the, the film the film had this world premiere at the berlin film festival last uh, uh this january year, february this yeah. yeah so when we did the premiere there uh we brought the chef like what well, the chef of the last story the owner of the of that restaurant and uh, Obviously, you're in Europe and you're, or you're anywhere that you are outside of Cuba, people ask you a lot of, about vegetarians and all of that. And, and he was, yeah, yeah, we have a couple of vegetables, but we have sausage. So for people in Cuba, it's very, it was very hard to look at vegetables. And it's an island with a lot of land, but like we were heavy uh, carb eaters, you know, carb and meat eaters. But that's changing. So there is now communities of like vegetarian communities in Cuba. There is a lot of vegan rest, uh, communities that are starting his own restaurant that was very uh, protein oriented. Now, like I was in, in, in Miami last Friday for the theatrical premiere and somebody went to the, to the theater and told me, you know what, I just visited that restaurant last month and was the place with more options for vegetarians. So, 
And this is, he went to Berlin on, on, on February, and this is three months after. So they're very smart to pick up on what they have to do. And also, like, we didn't have, used to have, like, a lot of products. Like, we didn't used to have arugula. And now there is farmers that understood that arugula is nice, and they're starting to produce it. So it's all, again, it's a, a, about the education, because he has told the friends of the other restaurants, hey, we need to create more vegetarian options. And their friends are smart as well, so they're starting again also. So it's, I think it's a process, and I think we're going to see it more and more and more. Uh, that people is gonna value vegetables more. There is uh, a lot of hydroponics in Cuba, and they're amazing. The food is very good because it's organic, but they're they're not enough. They're not enough. Like like there's not enough food for for being produced in Cuba for what the island needs. So the reason that we focus mainly on the countryside is because people in urban cities cannot grow their own food, and so the tradition unless it's a restaurant, has died a lot. When they can get food, when they have more access to food, um, I think it's going to start like coming back to them. But you can see the authentic dishes in Cuba better in the countryside because they can produce their own food. Um, thank you. Your film is absolutely fabulous. And I thank you. It is inspiring. I was born in Havana. I left after graduating from kindergarten with one of Batista's kids. Wow. And then I went back again when they hosted the Pan Am Games in 1991. Wow. And I was able to meet all the artists and writers. And the going joke at the time, Cubans do have fabulous sense of humor, was what are the three you know, successes of the revolution? Healthcare, education, sports. What are the three failures of the revolution? <coughs> breakfast, <laughs> excuse me, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, <laughs> in 1991 especially. <laughs> uh, oh, and then I, w I was last there a couple of years ago, and uh, they're working so hard to build up tourism, which is where the money is, but the same joke was going around. And it was so wonderful to see your focus on food and growing food and uh, the pride, but there's still a shortage of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. For what do you think? Yeah, for everybody. And, and, and it's, it's tough because there is a lot of the problems that we have because we're a poor country. There is a lot of the problems that we have because of the embargo. There is a lot of the problems that we have but because of, of the government. But there is a lot of the problems also because of lack of education, like I've been saying. For being a country that doesn't have a lot of things, we don't know nothing about zero waste. So Cubans doesn't take advantage of the entire animal or doesn't take advantage of the entire plant or doesn't take advantage of a lot of things because of a lack of culture around it. So that's, that's where, where we say again, okay, we have to come back to, to, to education. We have a lot of plantain and nobody eats the, the flower of the plantain. And in Vietnam, it's a very successful salad. So again, it's because they don't know they can use it. Um, when you kill a chicken, like in Cuba, they throw out a lot of the things instead of doing stock out of that chicken that they can create soup. We don't, they don't know how to, how to produce ingredients. They don't know how to meet, create a lot of things. So again, like, there is a lot of problems that, w that I cannot control. I cannot control an embargo, or governmental decisions, and all of that. But we can. But what we're trying to do is, okay, let's educate a little bit in how they can produce their own stuff, how they can grow things in a garden, because they have sometimes gardens and they they don't plant, they don't plant nothing in their gardens. You know, like we have to train them. We have to train them how to do that because. When you, when you have like so many problems in your life, in your daily life, uh, your creativity uh, dies a little bit, you know? But you just need a little bit of a push and you can gain it back, you know? They're, they're focusing on other things that they have to do for their family economies and, and this is not the, the, like the food tastes good is not the main thing in the city. So I cannot control the other ones because they're very tough, but I can try to, to make them a little bit more creative with what they have. 
this one, one. Uh, we we're submitting it to the Havana Film Festival. We we really hope that it's going to be shown in December in the Havana Film Festival. Um, as far as we know, as far as we know, that like no, absolutely no press in Cuba has said something bad about the film, and they know about the existence of the film. They know all the festivals that the film has been. So we don't we don't expect that we're going to have a pushback. But you never know. Like we, we're very hopeful that the film will play in December in Cuba. Maria, at the beginning of the of the screening, suggested that Food Stories is now you, you have a bigger project in mind. Where are you taking it? Well, we're doing the, the the culinary initiative. We're doing we're doing several projects, but the one that is very important important for Cuba is the culinary initiative. As I mentioned, we're going to have we're we're starting to work in three things. One is uh, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna give an award for content makers in Cuba that create food documentaries, food books, and and food blogs, and it's gonna it's gonna have a cash prize that is gonna it's gonna be important enough to to motivate them to create this content because like they need to know maybe they don't know they are like oh nobody has honey but they don't know that it's a local honey producer somewhere because we don't have internet we don't have television. We don't have nothing of that, so they they cannot know what, they're, what what's happening in the rest of the island. So the first thing is that like we're gonna give awards for books, documentaries, and and blogs or, or reporting. Uh, the second is that we're gonna start bringing chefs from the states that focus in zero waste, in in sustainable growth, and all of that to Cuba, and we're gonna do an exchange. We're gonna bring them to work in a couple of restaurants. And then we're going to bring the chefs from Cuba to the state to work in a couple of restaurants here. Um, hopefully, we have the backings of certain important institutions. And, and this is the first things that we're doing. And then we're going to continue with the work that we're doing in education. Like every time that we go to Cuba, we go with a bag full of books and seeds and everything. And, and, and we give it to people in Cuba to educate them. Hopefully, we can, we can do more with our initiative. And, and, but this, that, that's the the Cuban focus right now. Uh, in the future, we're going to do food stories in other countries. Uh, but as, a, as documentaries, like th in this kind uh, of form? Or, or different, depending on the country. But yeah, uh, but, but in Cuba, that, that's our, our, our main goal, to, to some extent, to make Cuba a culinary destination, like to, to put it in their mind that they can be a culinary destination. And with this? Thank you, thank you, Azori. Thank you, Maria. Uh, Maria thank is actually you. Thank you, Maria. an associate producer of the film. <laughs> thank and you. and um, uh, Cuban Food Stories will have a New York uh, release in some, some somewhere in the sometime in the fall. So tell your friends to go and see it. See it. And but you saw it first. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>